Hello, my name is Kevin Maher, and I'm a member of the Programming Committee here at the Bay Community Theater. This week's featured film in our continuing Beyond the Bay virtual film series is Mr. Smith Goes to Washington, released by Columbia Pictures in 1939, directed by Frank Capra, and starring Jimmy Stewart, Gene Arthur, and Claude Rains. By the time Mr. Smith was released, Capra had won three Best Director Oscars, and his 1934 classic, It Happened One Night, had won all five of the major awards, Best Picture, Director, Screenplay, Actor, and Actress, one of just three films to ever do so. Capra was at the height of his powers and fame and set out to make a statement about America. He was trading on a well-established model for making crowd-pleasing features that critics have noted reflected how America wanted itself to be portrayed. His heroes were everymen, decent and upstanding, who were often pitted against overwhelming odds that tested their resolve. In films like Mr. Deed Goes to Town and later Meet John Doe and It's a Wonderful Life, Capra illustrated how the power of innocence and idealism could overcome cynicism and corruption. Mr. Smith Goes to Washington is perhaps the greatest example of the Capra formula, with Capra favorite Jimmy Stewart starring in the iconic role of Jefferson Smith. But its origins would have created a much different film. Based on an unpublished story by Lewis Foster called The Man from Montana, Columbia acquired the film as a vehicle for Ralph Bellamy, with Reuben Mamoulian slated to direct. Capra envisioned the film as a sequel to Mr. Deeds Goes to Town, however, with Gary Cooper reprising his role. Contract negotiations wouldn't allow Cooper to participate, so the title was changed and Jimmy Stewart was borrowed from MGM. Stewart later called the part the role of a lifetime. Capra recreated the U.S. Senate on a studio soundstage, exactly as it stood in Washington which created grand and impressive visuals, but also caused shooting difficulties due to the three-tier layout. In order to get reaction shots from the gallery, Capra utilized multiple cameras and sound equipment running simultaneously, at the time a virtually unheard of practice in Hollywood. Technical difficulties aside, Capra created a laid-back and relaxing set that catered to the actors that he so dearly loved. Known as, known as an actor's director for the patience he often showed, Capra even built his sets to accommodate their whims. Notice that all of the sets were created so that Jean Arthur enters showcasing her left side, which she considered her best side. Capra was also known for letting character actors shine in supporting roles, and Mr. Smith is no different, with a veritable who's who of well-known secondary players like Thomas Mitchell, Edward Arnold, Guy Kibbe, Eugene Pallett, Harry Carey, and Beulah Bondi, adding dimension to the story. While Foster Lewis won an Oscar for his original story, actors Harry Carey, Claude Rains, and Jimmy Stewart were all nominated but lost, part of a then record 10 losses for the film on Oscar night. All was not smooth sailing, however, because Capra received pushback from both the Boy Scouts of America and the U.S. Park Service with neither entity wanting anything to do with the film. The Boy Scouts became the Boy Rangers, and Capra shot scenes on the monuments in D.C. surreptitiously. The film wrapped production eight days over schedule and $268,000 over budget. But all agreed that there was something special in the can, and a Washington sneak preview was scheduled, complete with congressmen, cabinet Supreme Court members, and the press all in attendance. Capra himself was seated next to Montana Senator Burton Wheeler, who was so incensed by the picture that he stormed out halfway through the screening. His reaction was a leading indicator of the sentiment throughout Washington, with editorials and general vitriol winning the day. Capra said he had never been put through the ringer quite like he had in Washington after the screening. Ambassador Joseph Kennedy pleaded with Columbia boss Harry Cohn to withhold re release in all of Europe rather than damage Americans' prestige by showing it. Fortunately, audiences in the rest of America loved the film, and it grossed more than $5 million in its initial release. Released also in free Europe, French film fans liked it so much that theater owners across Paris chose Mr. Smith Goes to Washington as the last film to be shown before a German-imposed ban on American movies 
took effect in occupied France. Please join us for a live Q&A discussion of Mr. Smith on Tuesday, October 27th at 7.30 p.m. Check thebaytheater.com for more information and a link to our discussion. Cited as the fifth most inspiring film and the 26th greatest film of all time by the American Film Institute, please enjoy Mr. Smith Goes to Washington.